And hello and welcome to the first edition of The Gaming Zone as part of Xpound. I'm your reviewer, Chris, aka The Mole, and joining me is my co-reviewer for this, Marcus Shadow. Hello everyone, I am here to show you the light. And today we're going to be reviewing Lego Batman. Do! DC Heroes. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> That works. First up, presentation. I'll let Marcus do this one first. What did you think about the presentation? Well, I I'm going to go through and give uh, every section. We have here a rating out of 10. Um, and so my rating for presentation is a 10 out of 10. Uh, the presentation I thought was great. It's beautiful. Probably the best environments I've seen in a Lego game thus far. It really surprised me actually how many of the environments weren't purely Lego and it was there just to look good. Um, it's certainly the first Lego game that features a full city that you can just, you know, fly around and drive around and walk around in just like Grand Theft Auto style. Um, I guess it's this also... is kind of. The test bed for uh, Lego City on the Wii U, is it, that's coming out, I think? Yep, and it's also the first Lego game to feature voice actors. Yes, yes it is, and surprisingly, they did a really good job. Now, they did not get the voice actors back from any of the animated series, with the exception of Lex Luthor, is that correct? Uh, yep, that is correct, and I think one of the female superheroes has her voice from the animated shows as well, I'm not sure. Uh. Fair enough. But yeah, the voice actors that have come in to do Superman, Batman, Joker, especially Batman and Joker, they, they did a really good job stepping into the shoes of uh, Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. I was I was pleasantly surprised. And it worked because the characters are slightly different because, you know, they're Lego versions of the characters. Who has been there for you? One man! who has made it his mission to improve the lives of people around him. He has remodeled our buildings, helped keep our banks free of unnecessary clutter. You have always shown your appreciation. <laughs> Hmm. And why stop now? Um, my biggest concern was that adding voice acting, they were not going to be able to capture and retain the humor from the previous Lego games where all the characters were mute. But they did, and I have to give them props for that. Yep, I can completely agree with the voice actors. I'll be honest. I was kind of glad they didn't go with the animated series voices for some of the characters as, I'm sorry, I didn't want to see Kevin Conroy have to do more of the joking Batman, the witch Batman. He's still dark, but he jokes about being dark. Yeah. I also love the voice actor for Superman just because he's so over the top. Look at me, yeah. I'm Superman. And that's like, that's brilliant. That's how I see Superman. Indeed. And the writing was very good too. And I don't know... I don't know if they recorded separately or together. I'm going to assume separately because that's how it's usually done in the industry. But it seemed like they were together in the room and that these characters, especially like Batman and Superman and Robin, they had this chemistry that you don't see a lot in a lot of video games. And that was refreshing and very good to see because that made it a very enjoyable and immersive experience. Yep. And the thing with the cutscenes, the story and the voices and stuff like you were saying, in my honest opinion... It's not just a good Lego game. The, the other one, the other games, when you see the cutscenes, okay, it's sort of Star Wars-ish, or it's sort of Harry Potter-ish, or Lego, or Batman-ish, or whatever, but it, at the end of the day, it's Lego. This one, however, while being Lego, also felt like an actual Batman story because of the voices and how it was written, which made it 
unbelievably awesome. I loved the story. I couldn't stop playing it. In fact, I ended up playing it for like 12 hours straight one night just for the <laughs> hell of it. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is I think maybe not only were they trying to test for LEGO City with the big, you know, open-ended areas, but I think they were also trying to test for their upcoming uh, LEGO animated movie series that they're doing of, the, of different things. Like, I think they're doing, like, a Batman one. And I think doing, like, a Star Wars one or, like, a Justice League one or something. And I think they were testing for that. And if those LEGO movies are going to be anything like the cutscenes we've seen in this game, those movies are going to be awesome. They've already done a LEGO Star Wars movie. Oh, have they? I have it on DVD. It's called LEGO Star Wars The Padawan Menace. Available now. It's awesome. I'll have to check that out. It is. It's, it's awesome. Which, that has voices. That film... I'll tell you about that film later because I could go overboard with that when I start <laughs> to discuss it here. Yeah, let's not go that way. Next up, let's look at gameplay. Gameplay. Do you want to take this one? Uh, yeah, I'll take gameplay. Why not? Gameplay, for me, I like this gameplay. It... it was like Lego Batman 1, where you had to swap the suits and stuff, but then they also made it so when you swap to Superman, you've got all the free flight. They made it so Superman was indestructible, which was a nice little touch. They, they made it so when you're playing a Superman, you feel... Like you're playing as Superman, which is ironic as the Superman games don't really do that. <laughs> but Lego Batman does. Who who would have thought that? But the vehicles play unbelievably great. It, the gameplay is just awesome, in my opinion. I had no problem with the gameplay. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, Wonder Woman is the same way. She's essentially a female Superman. Yep, and so's Zod. Ah, I haven't unlocked him yet. And I think... And I think, yeah, I think Captain Marvel DLC is also like that. That makes sense. But yeah, I, I gave gameplay a 6 out of 10. Um, most of the gameplay was pretty good. It's pretty much from what you would expect from a LEGO game. Um, solid platforming. Um, again, like pretty much every other LEGO game they've come out with, the camera was a pretty big issue with the platforming because in a lot of levels the camera... It's kind of not in the right position. It won't zoom in on you or swing around properly. And so when you're trying to judge distances and you're trying to judge the z-axis, i.e. the depth of field, it's really hard to do with the way the camera is. And that made for a lot of aggravation and a lot of, yeah, me almost throwing my controller around. Um, the other problems I had, um, see, one was the map which was all but useless, until we discovered that the mysterious red line that would not go away on the compass was actually the north indicator on the compass. That made the map slightly less useless. But the fact that on the map, it shows you where you are, it shows you where your partner is, or the second player, but it doesn't show the direction your character's facing. So it's like, great, I know where I'm at. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> but with that north, now, it helps a little bit. Um, yeah, now you know. Now I know, and knowing's half the battle. But um, and the the third problem I had with the gameplay was the flight. It had a pretty steep learning curve for me, primarily because they did not allow you to invert the y-axis control, which at least for me, when I'm at least, especially when I'm flying, you know, I always invert my control because it's like, well, in real life, if you're flying a plane, you pull back to go up. So it was really weird for me to actually push up on the stick to go up. So, but I mean, for people who are used to doing that, then the learning curve won't be as steep. For me, it was just a little bit steeper because I'm not used to it. So I was getting all turned around and stuff. Which, that's that's one of the good things about doing the review together. Personally, I, I loved the flight. I found the flight easy as hell. But at the same time, I understand where Marcus is coming from with that. Yeah. Which, but, it... it uh, uh, Oh, I was just going to say, which that, that's the point with the, uh, the co-review thing like this, is we get to see both sides. Like, you didn't like the camera. Personally, I loved the camera. I thought this camera, everything in this game was just the best it's ever been in LEGO. Even the camera, everything just played so fluidly. It was unbelievable. Well, it is true. I'll agree with that, and that out of all the LEGO games they've made so far, at least the ones that I've played, this one is the best one that I've played. They've polished a lot of things. 
and and some things not so much. And you know, again, some of the newer things they've added, like the flight and whatnot. You know, yeah, it's to be expected that it's not going to be completely perfect. Like I said, if they'd have just added the um, the y-axis reversal, the inversion of it, that would have made the flight so much better, in my opinion. But um, one thing they did improve on, which uh, Mole mentioned to me before I started playing, was that they improved the vehicle controls, which they had to because instead of having it a side-scrolling or you know, scrolling level where you're driving the vehicle, they actually had to put in a control scheme where you could literally drive your vehicle or fly your vehicle around the city. So they literally had to make it like Grand Theft Auto. And in doing that, the vehicles have become awesome. Yep, the vehicles are unbelievably fun, all except one level, which we'll get into later. It's the bonus mission. Ah. Yep, as I said at the top of this, my score for gameplay is 6 out of 10. And cool. So next up, we'll look at extras. Honestly, I haven't gotten much into that. I just recently beat the story mode. Um, but the extras look cool. There's There are a lot of characters in this game. A lot of non-Batman characters, which is nice. They have a good portion of the Justice League and their villains, including Neil before Zod. Uh, yep. I have every character in it so far, except for one, which is the one character I really want to get, which is Supergirl. She will be mine. Yes, yes, she will. <laughs> However, it it's it's good. I like the extras. The extras in this game are at the beginning at the main at the main screen. If you wait a few seconds for it to load, you get the you get a trailer for the next game, which I may be buying and may also review with Marcus Shadow if he gets it too, which is Lego Lord of the Rings. Oh, I'll be getting it. We shall review it together. <laughs> But yes, I, I did not see that trailer. I didn't know of its existence. I will be going back to look at that the next time I play the game. The other extras include free roam. I had one problem with... I have two problems with free roam. Yes. First, which I know Marcus has a problem with as well. Superman can fly faster than the level can load. That's how fast Superman is. Actually, I wanted to mention that with gameplay, too, with the vehicles. That's the one problem I had with the vehicles. Because what they did with this game is they brought back the quote-unquote ghost studs from the Lego Harry Potter games. Which is, a, I like them because it's basically, it outlines the path you need to take. So it's like your little waypoint marker so you know where to go. The problem I always had was when I was in a vehicle driving, it drove fast enough that it caused those studs to despawn, so I had no clue where I was going, and with the useless map, I was completely stuck in the middle of Gotham. Ah, see, I didn't have that with the ghost ones. The only time I've had that was with Superman. I could fly so fast, he lands down, and the whole area is empty. Yeah. Then suddenly it starts to load around. It's like, whoa, he's so fast. It's like he could fly around the world and reverse time to before <laughs> Gotham was even built. Yeah, I, I imagine, and I've not tried using any of the aerial vehicles. Well, no, that's not true. I used the backcopter. But um, I imagine it'd be the same as if you took a flying vehicle. I would imagine they move about the same speed if you, like, flew over there and then landed with it. Actually, no. Really? Surprisingly, when I flew with a helicopter and stuff like that and we landed down there, no problem. It's because Superman's a little bit faster. And it, it's, I think it may, it may be due to programming or something, because it may be with Superman, they're reading him and not the right. vehicle and level and stuff. So it's like, yeah, a figure shouldn't be moving this fast, but it still works and it's awesome. So does that like, mean if you're running around the city as Flash, things will not spawn properly until you stop? Oddly, no. Flash works fine. He has the blur behind him, and when he runs, he's awesome. How, however, the sec. This brings us to my second complaint, which is kind of the same thing. My second complaint was to do with vehicles. Mm -hmm. I had the game crash once. When I was in split screen, when we both got a vehicle, I got my one first and drove out the back cave. Then the Crispy, who you may know from Wrestling x -Bound, he got in a vehicle. And the second he went to get in his vehicle and drive, because it was so soon after mine. And now it hasn't done it since, but it's done it once. The whole game froze. Ooh. And 
from what I've seen, that happens now and again where the game will freeze if when you're in split screen more than it will if you're in separate, which is a shame as I like my local multiplayer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the extras in the game, the rest of them, from what I understand, are pretty much the standard extras um, from every LEGO game. You have the Golden Bricks. Although in this game, the Golden Bricks are now tied into extra characters, where you basically you get X amount of Golden Bricks in a certain location, you build a gateway, and when you open that gateway, you open it, and you get an extra character. Yep, which is everyone from Alfred the Butler to Supergirl, which is cool. However, one of the extras I didn't like, which you have to build a gateway to, I kind of didn't like this, was Lego City in this game. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Lego City was awesome, don't get me wrong. You get, you even get to spawn Joker's Megazord and go around in that and destroy stuff. It, you get to play as Clark Kent in that if you've got Clark Kent unlocked. Mm -hmm. And when, when, when you reach a certain part in that, you get into the phone booth and he spins around and comes out Superman, which is nice. Nice. However, one problem I had with that, which really hindered my enjoyment of it, because you really need to collect every last brick if you're not using all of the time stuff, is basically the Batmobile. The Batmobile in that game in Lego City has one huge flaw. What's that? It doesn't turn properly. Really? And it's not just me. I thought it was just me at first. However... When I watched a few walkthroughs with where all the studs were and stuff, because there were certain parts I couldn't figure out, other people were having the same problem. The Batmobile was not turning for them properly. And it was like, yeah, that's kind of bad. Oh, it's because they put the Batmobile into an actual level instead of the free roam city, and so the controls were shifted, weren't they? The controls were shifted, but it's not a case of when you, if the controls are inverted or anything. It's a case no. of... When it goes to turn, it doesn't want to turn properly. It just goes to one side properly. It was a little bad. However, the game still that bit still enjoyable. I'm guessing it's because it was put into that level. Because if you remember from the previous games, the uh, Lego City levels, they had vehicles in it and they controlled a specific way. I'm willing to bet that when they sp when the game spawns the Batmobile in that level. It spawns it with the control overlay from the vehicles of that level, as opposed to the vehicles of the bat or vehicles the controls of the Batmobile from the city. That's probably why it does that. It might be, but like I said, it just has a problem turning, which is a shame. As part of getting the studs in Lego City on that involves getting the Batmobile, right. driving it perfectly to follow the trail yeah. of studs. Yeah. Jump over a ramp and land down perfectly. Ouch. Precision driving managed... without precision controls. Not yeah. a good game design. <laughs> no, I, man I managed to do it and left like one brick in the air because my jump wasn't that high. But still, I did it and I completed that level. However, I just hated the Batmobile in that. That, that was negative for me. I, I can but... certainly understand that. Um, the other extras, of course, are red bricks, which I noticed when you look at the... Um, you know, the red brick powers unlockable list. They now have them color coded. I'm assuming that's to the villain that unlocks them. Is that correct? Might be. Because they have like, I think they have like purple. They have like a, you know, a purple section. They have a green section. I'm assuming the purple section ah. is like the Joker unlock stuff. I thought that was cool. It's like, so now you know which villain or, you know, who you need to unlock which bonus, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I'll be honest, I haven't unlocked many of the red bricks. I've left them. They'll be the last thing I pick up in that game to get the, just to finish off the 100% rating. Right. However, I, I like the red bricks. Now, one thing I will mention here, going on the free roam stuff with the red bricks, one thing I really did love if it's in that game is how you unlock villains. Basically, in the open world free roam stuff, you go to a location, you turn on the scanner and stuff, and there's villains near each location, like penguins at the zoo, catwoman's at the police station, scarecrows at amusement mile. And when you get there, some of them show up straight away. Others you have to do like a little solve, like a little puzzle, or beat up some little bad guys. And then the bad guys appear, and then you fight them in like a little boss fight, and then you can buy them. I found that incredibly awesome. That that is awesome. I I liked it and disliked it. Um, but I also noticed too that's how you unlock their thugs. You beat up thugs after you beat up like five or six of them. You can arrest one or buy them, which yeah. I found interesting. The reason I 
kind of didn't like it is because of the way the save system works, which is the same way it works in every other game, except that in every other LEGO game that's been made, you go to this menu to to buy, you know, to unlock or buy characters that you've unlocked. Every time you buy one, it'll auto-save the game. So what I would frequently do is use that to force save the game when I need to leave and stuff. But because in this game, like Mulja said, you actually have to go around the city, beat people up to unlock stuff, trying to save the game is a pain in the butt in this game. Yeah, there is a way of doing it. Oh? The way of doing it is it also saves after you get a gold brick. It also True. saves after you get a red brick. <clears throat> it also saves after you buy a bad guy. It also auto You can also go into levels in free play, and the second you start a level, hit start and click save and exit. Uh, or save and finish the level. Boom, you've instantly that. saved. Yeah, I didn't think about that, but yeah. But uh, it's, it's it's you know... It, it's a little bit more work. Yeah, but it's done well. I like the you know the uniqueness of you, you go around and you have to beat up the bad guy to get him. I also love the little quotes before uh, they say beforehand, yeah. which, is, which is the only time some of those characters speak, but it's yeah. so worth it. Yeah. Again, the humor in this game is freaking awesome. Whoever wrote the lines for this game, genius. Yep. For example, did you want to say the Where's Our Ghoul one? I don't remember it word for word, but it's like something like, you can, you know, if you do something, you can be a Superman. No, wait, that's not right. A legend. That's right. You can be a legend. Yeah. Yeah, which was awesome. I loved that one. I, Although I was, I was disappointed I was... with Zod because it, the line should have been, <laughs> you will now kneel before Zod. I was going to say the same thing right then. <laughs> It should have been Neil before Zod. Unfortunately, it wasn't. But those quotes were still funny and awesome. Yes, yes, they were. You all right? Yeah. Being that close to the kryptonite weakened me. I don't think I can fly yet. I guess we can get there some other way. But now we will move on to Final Verdict. Did you want to give your Final Verdict first? Sure. My, my final verdict, my overall rating is an 8 out of 10. It is a great game. It's the best one in the LEGO series thus far, based on the ones I've played. And uh, the ones I haven't played are uh, Pirates and Indiana Jones. I think those are the only two that I haven't played. And the original Star Wars ones, because I have the complete collection. But um, And Clone Wars. And Clone Wars. Oh, that's right. That was LEGO Clone Wars. Yeah, I refuse to play that game. <laughs> but How dare yeah. you? <laughs> But it's yeah, awesome. no, this is a great game. It's I, I love the open world feel. I love when you're going through Gotham. It looks like they took a lot of inspiration from Arkham City because the environments look like they came right out of Arkham City. A lot of them do. Um, you know, Arkham City, DCU, stuff like that, where they've fully imagined Gotham City. That's where they've taken the inspiration from. It looks like, and it just it looks great. And then when you throw like the Lego architecture in with it and the Lego people and vehicles and stuff it's just it feels like lego gotham city um so yeah if you're a batman fan if you're a dc universe fan a justice league fan you know pick up this game it's great it accurately represents the heroes as long as you know, heroes and villains the characters as long as you're not going into this trying to take it too seriously because at the end of the day it is a lego game and so therefore it is a parody it is humorous and the humor is top notch Okay, and uh, my final verdict. I'm going to give the game a 9.5 out of 10. 9.5 out of 10. I'm going to say something now which is a little controversial, and I don't care. Not only is it the best LEGO game of all time, in my opinion, it's the best Batman game of all time. I know, I know, cue the Arkham fanboys screaming like, No, you can't <laughs> do that, burn him at the stake. I don't give a shit. I played that, but Arkham Asylum, awesome. Played Arkham City, not quite as good as Arkham Asylum. But I still enjoyed it. However, with those games, after I played them, I really didn't feel the need to go back and get every little collectible. This game, I want to get every collectible. I want to get all the figures. I, I have the need to go back and replay through it with my friends when they come around to play in split screen. Because the multiplayer, I have the need to just do sh random crap like get Superman and just go to a pedestrian and heat vision him in the face. And when he wiggles on the floor screaming in pain, just giggle as I hold on heat vision. Right. Lego dickery, oh, but still. <laughs> one thing we should have mentioned with presentation, I'm kicking myself for not mentioning it then. Probably my favorite thing about this game, the best thing about this game, in my opinion, 
if you're in free roam mode in Gotham City, you choose Superman, you start to fly, you get the John Williams orchestrated Superman theme song playing the whole time. <laughs> yep. That is freaking awesome. That is awesome. I did like that. In my opinion, I really wish they'd done the same with some of the other characters, but I can understand it. Hey, we got the Superman music, it's awesome. I would like it if when you transformed, when you were Wonder Woman, if you started to fly, you actually got the Wonder Woman <laughs> song in the background. That would have been awesome. That would have just been epic. I was thinking but, with the other ones, they could have like lifted the Justice League theme song from the cartoon. Yeah, or Aquaman, they could have lifted the Brave. songs from the Brave and the Bold. <laughs> The Corey's off Atlantis. <laughs> but no. Then Cyborg should have the Teen Titans theme song. <laughs> Teen Titans. <laughs> Which version? Let's go. One, two, three, four, go. <laughs> Come on, yeah. that theme song's awesome and you know it. It was. However, I will, like I said, overall, best Batman game, best Lego game in my opinion. 9.5 out of 10. Buy it today. Also under extras, I would would be reminisced to say i don't know if all versions do this but at least the ps3 one that i got did and i've noticed the wii and stuff do it actually comes bundled with a tiny lego lex luthor in a power suit holding the weapon from the game i awesome. wish i had gotten that but no my my version did not come with that I'm, I'm, okay so apparently not all versions do <laughs> just the important ones i've been yelling <laughs> crazy i get you the mole He's been Marcus Shadow. See ya. Sorry to wipe that grin off your face, Joker. You're not sorry. You're not sorry at all. <laughs>